Welcome back to the Let's Ditch Misophonia channel. Today I am answering a question that I get asked all the time and I see this question searched on the internet frequently and that is what causes misophonia? Now before I answer this question I want to say that my answer may have you thinking what the heck and clicking off of this video but I'm going to provide context for what I'm going to say next. So stay with me because I'm going to offer a different perspective and answer to this question than you might expect, but I'm gonna offer an answer that I think is going to be more useful for you than what you found on the internet so far. So when people ask me, Brooklyn, what do you think causes misophonia? Why do some people experience this pattern and other people do not? And my answer to this question is, one, I don't know, and two, I don't care. <laughs> now again, let me add context to this. There are amazing, really intelligent people out there who are dedicated to researching and answering this question. I am not one of those people. My job as a misophonia coach is not figuring out the answer to this question. My job as a coach is to support those who are suffering right now in getting better. And I do not believe that you need to know the why in order to heal. I, to this day, having cleared my misophonia after 20 years, I still don't know why I had it or, for example, why I experienced it and my sister didn't. I don't know the answer to that. But what I do know is that I'm no longer suffering. So what I want to focus on as a coach and supporting others is I want to support you in healing and getting misophonia relief. And then if you find that it's useful to go back and figure out the why, then go for it. So think of a city where there is this giant pothole in the middle of the street and people are, you know, they're, they're driving their cars over, they're getting flat tires, bicyclists are flipping over. I mean, people are getting hurt. What do you want the city to do? Do you want them to sit there and philosophize? Is that a word? Sure. Philosophize why the pothole got there, how it got there. Is it going to get bigger? Are more potholes going to pop up? What's going on here? Or do you want them to fill that pothole first so that people stop getting hurt and then they can go back and figure out maybe where it came from. Are more potholes going to pop up? But the first order of business is making sure that more people aren't getting hurt. That's what I do as a coach. And again, there are amazing people out there who are researching this and hopefully can prevent this pattern from developing in others. And as a coach, and if you're watching this and you are, you have a desire to eliminate your misophonia, I would say and I would share with you that the why, the question of what causes this or why am I suffering, the answer to that question is not going to help you get relief. In fact, focusing on the why or the what caused it can be your brain's really sneaky way of keeping you stuck in the suffering spiral. And it's not that your unconscious mind wants you to feel bad or good or that it even wants to keep you stuck. It's just that misophonia to your unconscious mind is familiar. Being uncomfortable, being triggered by particular noises is what your mind is used to and so it seems safe. Your mind is wired for survival. That is your unconscious mind's primary directive. And so if you've been experiencing this pattern for years and years, it isn't going to likely hop on board with this desire all of a sudden to get rid of this thing that it's it's known and feels familiar with for years and years, even if it's something that is causing you harm. Because change to the unconscious mind can seem really scary, even good change. So think about those lottery winners who they win all of this money and then a few years later they end up more broke than before they won the lottery. It's because consciously in their mind, it's like, yes, I did it. Like this is everyone's dream. I have all of this money. I can quit my job. I can buy nice things. But in their unconscious mind, having all of this cash flow, having all of this money is unfamiliar. And so unconsciously, they find ways to spend it. They find ways to get rid of it. 
And so again, your mind doesn't want you to be miserable. Your mind doesn't want you to be poor. It's that your mind wants to keep you safe and not having a lot of money is what is familiar. And so these lottery winners, they win these large sums and then they spend it and before they know it, they're more broke than before they started. So with a pattern of misophonia, if this is something that's been operating for years and years, it's something that your mind is familiar with. So if you just decide one day, hey, I wanna get rid of this thing, it might be a little challenging and your mind might find ways to keep you stuck. For example, focusing on finding an answer to what causes misophonia or why am I suffering? The answer to that is not going to get you relief, but it is going to distract you and it is going to, to delay the healing that you are seeking. One of the examples that I love to share is you think about the movie 127 Hours based on a true story this guy goes hiking and his arm gets trapped under a boulder. Now, this movie is called 127 Hours for a reason. He's not, it's not called 12 minutes. He's not trapped for 12 minutes. He's trapped for 127 hours. So if you think about the end result, this guy has to cut off his own arm to give himself a chance to survive, to free himself and hopefully go get help. So if that's what he ended up doing, why didn't he just cut his arm off 12 minutes into being stuck or immediately, right? because his mind is looking at his trapped arm and knows this arm is a part of us. We need this arm, this arm is important. And so even though he knows he's trapped and likely that's what he's gonna have to do, it takes him 127 hours to get to that point. Now imagine if the same thing happened, but it was his backpack that got stuck under the boulder. How fast do you think he would have sliced through that backpack to free himself? Probably right away he likely wouldn't have waited 127 hours to cut through his backpack because the backpack isn't a part of who he is. It's something that he wears. It's something that he carries. And so the first thing that I do with my clients when they come to me and they're seeking relief from misophonia, they're wanting to get rid of this thing. The first thing I do is help my clients separate misophonia from their identity. So you'll see, I see a lot in the Facebook groups now and online and the Reddit threads, I am a misophone or I have misophonia. How many times have you said that, right? What that does is it's showing your mind that this is, this is who we are. This is a part of us. And the more you attach it to your identity, the more difficult it becomes to then get rid of it when you decide that you want to do so. Just like it took that guy 127 hours to cut off his arm because it's a part of who he is and his mind recognizes that and says, no, 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 we need this arm for important things. And so it took him a while before his mind and he finally came to the conclusion that I'm going to die if I stay here. And if I cut off my arm, I'll at least have a chance of survival. So the first thing I do with clients is we do some identity work so that misophonia rather than a part of yourself or rather than who you are, it's something that you just experience it. And once we can make that shift, once we can make that distinction, then it's easier for your unconscious mind to hop on board with creating change. So when it comes to the question, what causes misophonia? I personally, as a coach, do not care and I don't waste my time with trying to find an answer because I know that there are other people out there who are doing that work. And if you are looking to heal from misophonia, focus on what it is that you want, which is healing. Focus on finding and implementing ways to get relief. And then again, once you find that place of, oh, finally, I can exist and live a normal life around these sounds. And trust me, it's amazing when you get to that place. Then if you find it useful, you can go back and answer or attempt to answer the question of, how did I get here? What caused this? For me personally, I still don't know and I don't care. I'm not interested in going through and digging up past trauma to figure out how this pattern developed. What I know is that it's something I experienced for a long time. And what I know now is that I no longer suffer from it. I also know that if for whatever reason this pattern popped back up in my life, I know that I have the tools and strategies to eliminate it once again and show my mind that it's okay to be okay around noises. So again, if you don't know me already, if this is the first video that you've watched on my channel, my name is Brooklyn. I am a misophonia rewiring coach 
and I suffered from misophonia for over 20 years before finally eliminating it through unconscious reprogramming. This is what I did for myself, and now this is what I support my clients in doing as well. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe to my channel. We are just getting this channel off the ground, and we have so many amazing videos coming your way. My VA and I are working on turning these out as fast as we can. And also check out the description of this video so you can sign up for my newsletter. I have my signature eight-week coaching program, Rewire Misophonia at the Source. I open that once a quarter, and I also have limited one-on-one -on -one coaching spots as well. So hop on my newsletter to make sure you get all the information about how you can work with me to lessen your trigger sounds, alleviate your suffering, and just have more joy and excitement and freedom in your life free from the misophonia suffering spiral. I will catch you in the next video.